When we enter the cockpit, one of the first items that we check is the battery voltages. To do this, you look at the battery voltage displayed on the electrical panel. The battery voltage selector allows each battery voltage to be checked. Let's assume that they are below the minimum required 25.5 volts. So, you will have to recharge the batteries from external power. Because the green avail light is not lighted, meaning that you have no ground power, you have to ask the ground personnel to connect a ground card. The ground card is now connected. The green avail light has appeared, which means external power is plugged in. Its voltage and frequency are normal and it is ready for use. Switch the external power on. When the Cyan on light is illuminated, the ground cart is supplying the aircraft. The ECAM electrical pages have been called for you. Usually, only one ECAM electrical page can be displayed at a time on the lower ECAM. For training purposes, we will show both at the same time. We can confirm that external power A is supplying normal voltage and frequency because the parameters shown on ECAM are green. By following the green lines on the ECAM pages, you can see that the external power is supplying all the electrical system. If external power B was also connected, it would supply the left side of the network and external power A the right side. Notice that as the engines are not running, the indications of the associated generators and engine numbers are in amber and fault is illuminated in amber on the generator push button switch. You can see the green arrows which indicate that the DC BAT bus is charging batteries 1 and 2. Notice also that the DC APU bus is charging the APU battery. Both batteries are now charging from the DC BAT bus. During this time, you can continue with your cockpit preparation. The average charging cycle is approximately 20 minutes. As you can see, 
All batteries have now disconnected from the DC bus. There are no green The battery voltages are normally checked using the BAT selector with the batteries You can check on the panel that the voltage of battery 1 is normal. Notice the white OFF indication on the ECAM page and the OFF light illuminated in BAT1 push button switch. You can check on the panel that the voltage of battery 2 is normal. You can check on the panel that the voltage of APU battery is normal. As you can see, the three batteries now have voltages above 25.5 volts. The battery charging cycle is completed. We need to switch the batteries back on. We will do this for you. The three batteries are now available. After the battery check, the standard operating procedure recommends that the battery selector should remain in the APU position to avoid the discharge of BAT1 or 2. It is now time to start the APU and disconnect external power. We will start the APU for you. You can see on the AC ECAM page that the APU generator parameters are now displayed. Notice that the APU generator has automatically taken over supplying the left part of the electrical network. This is because APU generator has priority over external power A for this side and over external power B if connected. When deselecting external power A, the APU generator takes over. A green line has appeared connecting the APU generator to the right side of the network. Let's look for a moment at the outside of the aircraft to see the only item associated with the electrical system on the walk around. You should check that the ground electrical power door is closed, if not required. We are back in the cockpit and it is time to start the engines. Usually, when we start the engines, the ECAM engine page is displayed. However, for training purposes only, we will keep the ECAM electrical pages displayed throughout the flight. 
Normally, only one ECAM electrical page can be displayed at a time on the lower ECAM. For training purposes, we will show both at the same time. The electrical system is designed so that each engine generator will automatically come online and power its respective bus. We will start engine 1 first. The engine is running as indicated by its identification numbers in white. Notice the generator automatically supplies the left side of the electrical system leaving the APU to power the right side. Also notice that the fault light on the general one push button switch has disappeared. Engine 2 can now be started. Engine 2 generator takes over from the APU to supply the right-hand side of the system. The fault light on the generator 2 push-button switch has also disappeared. The APU is no longer connected to the network and the APU generator is now showing 0% load. Once both engines are running, the APU can be switched off. We have just landed and are taxiing to the gate. We will start the APU for you. The APU is now available and is standing by to take over from the engine-driven generators when the engines are shut down. Both engines can now be shut down. Both engines are stopped. The APU generator is back online and has automatically taken over supplying the entire electrical system. The avail light on the panel and the external power indications on the ECAM have appeared, indicating that the external power source is plugged in and available. Select External Power On. The ON light comes on in the external power push-button switch 
and the green lines to AC bus 2 indicate that external power has taken over from the APU for the right side of the network. We can now shut down the APU. The external power can now be switched off when convenient. We are back to a normal display configuration. When on batteries, only the upper screen remains active. To shut down the entire electrical system, we must switch off the batteries. This will be done for you. All lights on the overhead panel have disappeared, except the avail light, which is receiving power from the external cart. The battery voltage indications are LCDs and are wired directly to the batteries, so that they are always displayed. The aircraft is now considered to be electrically shut down.